I had the privilege of working with and for her as a Secret Service agent. I found Mrs. Clinton to be the most deceptive human being, manipulative political person in a position of power I'd ever met in my entire life. It wasn't so much that she was a liar. It was that she did it and she deceived and manipulated with such ease. So that Liar. was Dan Bongino. Oh. Yes, strong Huge words from fan. Dan Bongino, on, yeah, uh, as many of us are, on Tucker on Wednesday. We're going to bring in Dan right now. Dan Bongino, former Secret Service agent, former NYPD officer, and the host of the Dan Bongino show. So, Dan, you triggered a few people, especially some former uh, Hillary Clinton staffers who took to Twitter and had a different view of whether or not you have a view of Hillary Clinton. This is uh, Nick Merrill. He was a traveling press secretary, an aide to Hillary Clinton. This is what he tweeted after your segment on Tucker on Wednesday. He said, I've worked for Hillary Clinton for a decade, and two things are true. She has enormous respect for the Secret Service and a great relationship with the agents on her detail. And two, this guy, meaning you, was never on the Clinton's detail, and I don't recognize him in the slightest. So... Dan, uh, you know, the Internet has a way of working these things out. Uh, I think you were a part of pushing this out as well. There are some photos, pesky photos that have emerged of you uh, oh, on her go. detail. The photo uh, doesn't lie. That looks like a young, dashing, handsome Dan Bongino. We're going to ask him also <laughs> about what happened between that photo and now. But, but the point is, the photos don't lie. It's the same, you know. Al Franken couldn't get away. Yeah. Dan, what do you say now that this is played out? Yeah, that's interesting. That photo was taken in 2001 at the U.S. Open tennis tournament and was on the back cover um, of Newsday. Uh, it was actually a color photo. I don't know why I made it black and white a long time ago to make it seem more, what, I, I, I give some emotion in it or something. I'm not sure. But I had it on an Instagram. Now, what's interesting about that is th these people are very clever, the Clinton mob out there. They always attack the messenger when you go after the Clintons, right? And he says something. He goes, well, he was never on the detail. And he's right. I was not on her presidential campaign detail. But I was there way before Nick arrived. My mounds of work and the government documents I have showing my pile of work with the Clintons is probably this thick. I knew the Clintons probably before Nick did. So it's just interesting that he would pick a fight with me. Let me just make this point, guys, too, because this is important. This is how the Clinton mob works, right? What they do is they need the Clintons to stay in power and to stay relevant. So they need to discredit anybody with information on the Clintons that may impugn their reputation and cover up the bevy of secrets that are still out there. I'm telling you guys, because sources feed me stuff all the time. There's stuff out there on the Clintons that hasn't been made public. And believe me, they know it because they were there when it happened. So, so, so stop for one second, Dan. I, I want to get your take on how this actually made you feel when Nick Merrill put that out, a communications guy, a spin guy. That's what he does for a living. This what the press folks in Washington do. Put that photo up for one more second. You're sitting literally behind her in the proximity, and your job at that very moment, your job is to protect her should the unthinkable happen. You're very close, perhaps the closest in proximity to her. We have seen certainly in public events like this, things can happen. You, your life is technically on the line there, and we shouldn't overlook that point. How does it make you feel when Nick Merrill says, nah, you weren't even there? Yeah, well, well, it's kind of disgusting, and he's a disgusting human being. He really is. He's never put his life on the line for anything other than maintaining the sad, sick political aura of the Clintons. And, and you know, I say to Nick, uh, who tweeted that and, you know, went after me, the message, that's fine. You're certainly entitled to do that. I respect your right to fight back, uh, but I'm going to fight, too. You know, I, I swore an oath to the Constitution in the Secret Service. Uh, I did not swear an oath to cover for your mi the misdeeds of your messiah, Hillary Clinton, and neither did the people who contact me. I can't give them up. And, you know, fair enough, Griff, some people have said, well, you know, if you have information, put it out there. I totally understand that. I get it. But I don't think you understand the position I'm in. These are friends of mine and associates who have contacted me over the course of many years with very damaging information on these people that is unimpeachable and more than credible. I can't just put it out there without getting them hurt. If they say to me, listen, this is here, but I'm afraid to talk because they're afraid of the Clintons, which they are, I'm not going to get them and their families and put them in, in potential jeopardy with their jobs. It's an awkward position to be in. But the Clintons got to be very careful about poking that bear. And Dan, I'm telling you, I, I can't say this enough. People know what happened with them. Dan, we want to hear from you on a, another topic as well. Um, an MS-13 victim was stabbed 100 times. His heart ripped out of his chest in a sanctuary jurisdiction out of Maryland. Uh, so so yeah. does, 
when we hear stories like this, obviously President Trump has talked about MS-13. He talked about uh, the gang uh, on the campaign trail. He's also talked about it as president of the United States. When we hear stories like this, doesn't this make it more difficult for critics to oppose sanctuary jurisdictions? You know, Lisa, the critics have no point. You know, we, we just passed Thanksgiving, right? And I think everybody thanks God every day for our fighting men and women and them keeping this country safe, right? And that flag that they drape themselves in overseas. What does that mean to you? No, I'm serious. Like, to the listening audience out there, and I know we have a lot of liberals. Of course, you're always welcome to put your eyeballs on the channel. But what does that mean to you? Like, we have jurisdictions now that have taken that flag and thrown it out the window and said, hey, anybody's welcome here anytime for any reason. Policies and laws be damned. And what happens? What happens is people die. People are killed in the real world when really stupid people in positions of power throw the flag, the laws, and the rules and regulations out the window and let anybody in their family come in despite the rules and regulations. I ask one simple question to those people. Where do you want to go if you were a potential criminal coming into the country illegally? Where? Do you want to go to a sanctuary county? Knowing you will never be reported to the uh, to uh, immigration for deportation, sure. and you'll be almost protected by local police, or yeah. you want to go to a law and order county? Where do you want to go? Dan, Pretty you ran, simple answer. You man. ran. Dude, we only have a couple of seconds here, Dan. You ran for Congress in that very district. How bad is the MS-13 problem there? Uh, Pete, it is. It is a. It is a. It, uh, it's it's off the I can't it's like a nuclear explosion of illegal immigration in that county it's worse than anybody knows go there and check it out if you think I'm if you think I'm misleading you all right well, well I don't think you are so uh, no we'll you. take your word for it uh, mm -hmm. Dan thank you so much for joining us Dan, this appreciate morning. it thanks we a lot it. welcome back a major announcement expected in the Hillary Clinton email investigation on Capitol Hill next week. Our next guest is someone who might have had a hand in putting these new revelations forward. Joining us now, Florida Republican Congressman Matt Gates. First, Congressman, uh, happy uh, belated, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> happy Thanksgiving and happy Black Friday to you. Of course. Now, tell us, you uh, are possibly uh, headed towards some sort of announcement uh, about the Clinton email uh, scandal. We have talked uh, extensively about it. Others in the media perhaps less inclined to, but we wanted to bring you on. What can you tell us? Well, we now have the evidence that the FBI's investigation of Hillary Clinton did not follow normal and standard procedures. The current deputy director of the FBI, Andrew McCabe, sent emails just weeks before the presidential election saying that the Hillary Clinton investigation would be special, that it would be handled by a small team at headquarters, that it would be given special status. Combine that with the fact that Attorney General Loretta Lynch told James Comey to call this a matter and not an investigation, that she met with Bill Clinton on the tarmac, and that James Comey himself has admitted in testimony that he drafted the exoneration statement of Hillary Clinton before even interviewing her or other key witnesses. We seem to have a departure from the normal application of the law, and we will be calling for a full review by the Judiciary Committee of the process and procedures that potentially gave Hillary Clinton a different process and a different standard of justice than would be applied to any other American. Congressman, the email you're referring to, we're going to put it up on our screen right now, is from October 23rd, 2016, as you mentioned, just weeks before uh, that election, recent re recently revealed uh, through investigation. Uh, this is what it reads. It says, the decision was made to investigate it at HQ, meaning the Hillary Clinton matter, with a small team. WFO provided some personnel for the effort, but it was referred to as a special, and I was not given any details about it. So when you talk about a full Judicial Committee investigation review of this matter, you know, what new things do you expect to find? And, and as far as this big announcement, can you give us any more information about that? Well, we're going to have to have Christopher Wray, the new director of the FBI, come before the Judiciary Committee, and we need to have a full investigation. Uh, I believe there are others on the Judiciary Committee who are deeply troubled by the thought that Hillary Clinton would be given this special status in an investigation of potentially the mishandling of classified information. And, you know, you've got time and again circumstances where the FBI's procedures seem to have been influenced by Loretta Lynch, either by telling James Cohn 
Comey to call this a matter and not an investigation or by uh, simply constraining the review of the facts to a very small team. So I suspect that in the coming weeks, you will see the Judiciary Committee really look into whether or not we've got to have checks and balances at the FBI so that special people don't get special status. And if we yeah. didn't have a real robust investigation of Hillary Clinton, that's a real problem because it's an erosion of the rule of law. Congressman, we've got to let it go right there. We'll find out whether uh, former director James Comey was telling the truth when he said that uh, the Clinton investigation was handled in an apolitical and entirely routine manner. It sounds like he 